Hot gases are cooled from 1500 C to 125 C inside a heat exchanger. The flow is steady state and internally reversible, meaning there's no pressure drop. All right, it's just flowing through. There's no discussion of pressure here. All right, assuming ideal gas behavior with constant specific heats, so they gave us that. This gas is assumed, you're told it needs to be treated as an ideal gas with constant specific heats and use that value for C sub P. Determine the exergy transfer with the heat transfer from the gas. Okay, the hard thing is you read the problem a couple times over and you're trying to figure out what are they asking me to calculate and what symbols do I use to describe what I'm asked to calculate. They give me the units on what I'm asked to calculate. It's kilojoules per kilogram. So it's the exergy transfer with heat transfer that's from the gas. What type of symbol would you like to use for that? Exergy. Let's do this one with the heat transfer. Well, is that, does that look okay? Could be. I think the, the textbook uses a symbol like that. Um, could you also say it's the rate at which exergy is being transferred with heat divided by the rate at which fluid flow through the system? That, yeah, you could look for it that way as well. All right, same thing. It's like uh, if you go back in Thermo 1, sometimes we talk the lowercase w of the turbine which is cap W dot of the turbine divided by M dot of the turbine. True? Okay. So either one of these work. How do I want to calculate the energy, exergy transfer with the heat transfer that's coming from the gas? So in my mind, I have a heat exchanger. I'm going like this. Maybe it's the hot gas coming in at state one and the cooler, lower temperature gas going out at state two, we could put our temperatures there, 125 degrees C, temperature one of 1500 degrees C. We know that the pressure of one and the pressure of two is equal to pressure of one. It's not given, but there's no pressure drop. And we're, we're interested in, we know that there's an energy transfer, true. You can talk about Q dot as a rate at which energy is transferred by heat out of that fluid stream to cool it. Likewise, if you did an, another uh, balance, it would be the rate of exergy is transferred with that heat out of that fluid stream. That's really what we're asked to calculate. So how, do, what's the strategy for calculating, making the calculation that's asked for? Do an exergy balance, just like if you were asked to calculate Q dot, you'd probably do an energy balance. So if you do an exergy balance, you go like this, okay? And so now let's just do a general exergy balance for that control volume. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to try and follow the syntax of the book. If there was a transient term, it would be over on the left, but it's zero because it's steady state flow. And then we're going to have the flow of exergy with the heat transfer. Now, if we knew something about the dead state temperature and more importantly, the boundary temperature, and if it was constant at which that heat was transferring, there would be some model like this. But uh, hmm, it's probably a sum over all the little del Q dots of one minus T naught over TV because that TB is changing as the gas changes. So this is really complicated to calculate that flow from first principles. Let's continue our exergy balance equation. We'll have any exergy transfer out with any work. We'll have the mass flow rate bringing with it the flow exergy going out with the flow exergy. So we have a fluid stream in and out. And then we have some destruction. True? All right. Now, let's take a look. How about this work term? 
Why is that zero? Yeah, there's no, it's a heat exchanger. You have to make that assumption. What about this term right here? I know that I said it's internally reversible, no pressure drop, but also somehow they don't want you to account for if it's internally reversible, you assume no entropy production, no exergy destruction. That's to make the, the problem calculatable. So that comes from this wording, internally reversible. So what are we left with? We're left with the flow of exergy with the heat transfer per unit mass transfer is equal to EF2 uh, minus EF1, or leave it with the negative sign, put a negative right there, EF1 uh, minus EF2. Why do we have a negative sign? Because this one is positive into the system. The system, the control volume, has the gases flowing out, but which direction is the actual heat transfer? It's not into the gas, it's from the gas. All right. So, how do I calculate this? Well, is it H1 minus H2 minus T naught S1 minus S2? Is that what it is? All right. Now, let me ask this question. Uh, how do I calculate for an ideal gas uh, it, using constant specific heat? Is this C sub P T1 minus T2? Yeah. And then we have the dead state temperature. Now the equation for the change in S for an ideal gas assuming constant specific heats. Is that C sub P natural log of T2 over T1? Um, you know what? I've got to be careful here because normally we write these things as S2 minus S1 is C sub P natural log of T2 over T1 minus R natural log of P2 over P1, right? Where this second subscript goes down and the first is up. True? But I'm, I've kind of written it. Maybe I'll get rid of this minus sign. Uh, let's distribute the minus sign. It'll be so much less confusing for everybody. So we distribute the minus sign. This is H2 minus H1, S2 minus S1. Get rid of this negative sign here and get this T2 minus T1. And now we're ready to go. Isn't it C sub P natural log of T2 over T1 minus the R natural log of P2 over P1, close parenthesis bracket. And we said that the pressure is the same, so that term is natural log of 1 is 0. And now you can substitute numbers, because everything is known in our problem. And we calculate that the 